Good morning, everyone. I would like to open here at number seven of the 183rd period of sessions that is entitled Situation of Human Rights of Human Rights Defenders uh, regarding the environment in Panama and was requested by several civil society organizations. My name is Julissa Mantilla Falcón, President, and I'm here today with Commissioner Joel Hernandez, Commissioner Roberta Clark, that is a rapporteur for Panama, and Commissioner Carlos Bernal. Also, Tania Renaud, Executive Secretary, is here. Also, Maria Claudia Pulido, Assistant Executive Secretary, is here. And the rapporteur, Soledad um, Garcia Munoz. I would like to greet the state and civil society organizations. And before beginning, I would like to indicate the distribution of time. First, civil society organizations will speak for 20 minutes, then the representatives of the state will speak for 20 minutes. There will be five minutes for the intervention of the Ombudsperson Office. The Inter-American Commission will have 15 minutes, and then civil society and the state will have 12 minutes each for the second part. I also would like to say that we have a timer to measure time today. We have simultaneous interpretation and closed captioning at the hearing. And all the public hearings of the commission are a stream and the recordings are available uh, in our YouTube channel. Um, let's give the floor now to civil society. Thank you. El micrófono está apagado. Oh, you're on mute. Can you hear us now? Can you hear us? Yes, okay. Good morning. My name is Mr. Carrasco. I'm from the Association of Studies of Panama and I'm. we are members of the Human Rights Network of Panama. Honorable members of the commission, delegates of the state of Panama, representatives, uh, we are uh, on behalf of the petitioners organizations. We are from the AC on behalf of ACD and the movement for the defense of the territories as ecosystems of Bocas del Toro and the Center for International Environmental Law. And we also have other organizations, Hermanas de la Misericordia, Lucy Cordova, Caminando por la Infancia. I am here to introduce Feliciano Santos, Wendy Marama from the M. And movement and a member from the Bibri people and also another colleague from other of the provinces of Panama. Um, and we would like to mention that there was a previous hearing in 2017 regarding the situation of human rights defenders in Panama. And we are happy to be here today in this hearing to talk about the situation of environmental human rights defenders in Panama. Now we would like to give the floor to Feliciano Santos, that who will be talking on behalf of Modeteab. Good morning, uh, members of the commission and delegates of the state. Um, taking into consideration the hearing held in 2017 regarding the situation of environmental human rights defenders, the state of Panama assumed the commitment to create it in a round table in 2018, but everything stopped in 2019 with the change of administration. And therefore the state did not comply its commitment with the human rights defenders. In 2017, the state committed to investigating the case of construction of roadways in Palo Seco. And this situation was uh, denounced by Tomas Villagra. In 2019, the Office of the Attorney General concluded that the project was a request of the community, but therefore there was no need for criminal intervention and the case was closed. This shows that there is a lot of impunity in our country regarding environmental issues. When the authorities have evidence, solid evidence that criminal law 
and criminal environmental law was infringed, they just did nothing and they justified the in violation of the law because the community was just demanding the project. None public or private entity is over the law. That is what's included in legislation. But in practice, uh, they are not complying with this. And authorities did not comply with their functions. And therefore, they, we see that there is a lot of impunity because they did not comply with their commitments. Also, we would like to say that taking into consideration the situation of environmental human rights defenders, we see that people do not want to be on media and they don't want to stay in different legal proceedings. And we have the case of Villa Diana who had to leave the country because she felt unsafe. And there are several cases like this one. And this is happening in Panama. And uh, therefore, I would like to give the floor to Moise Montero. He wants to share his testimony with us today. Good morning. My name is Marcelo Montero. I would like to thank uh, organization ACD uh, to be participating in this hearing before the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights. And I would like to explain the situation I have gone through together with my family. We are victims of the actions of a company that crops uh, pineapple and they are spraying all the time different phosphate and highly toxic products and they build up in our bodies. Uh, this company is called Ananas Panama Corporation and they planted pineapple crops. My daughter, my daughter who was four years old had allergies, vomiting, headaches. My wife also suffered from allergies, I too. And since 2014, I have presented several complaints before the authorities, the environment, the um, ombudsman per, uh, office, etc. And uh, I did everything within what's established in law. And I would like to indicate that the state is guilty for these acts because they should respect our human rights. In 2021, uh, there was another company that was doing the same crop activities. It was a foreign Panamanian company and they were doing the same economic activity. Um, we file or the all the possible complaints before the institutions and authorities that I mentioned before, but law is not being observed. I would like to request this honorable commission to see what can be done with the state, because I would like to say that the state is responsible for anything that could happen to me or to my family. I would like to point to these two companies. The second number, the company's name is Cota PSA, and the other name, the other company is Anana Panama Corp. And they are responsible for what can happen to me. Their picture is frozen. I think that they lost connection. I don't know if anyone else from civil society um, is going to participate. We are not hearing them anymore, I think. I think that we have lost them. Yes. I think that they are having a connection issue. That's what's happening, I think. Uh, we have lost them, Madam President. But Daniel Holness from civil society is here, I think. Daniel? What they are doing is they are deforested over 30,000 
hectares of forests and jungle, and they have uh, destroyed the national park La Amistad. This led to deforestation and therefore they are doing cattle racing there. They are polluting our lands. They have um, created new roads and deforestated for that. There is no environmental assessment studies that are being conducted. Commission, we are concerned. We have gone before the different administrative and judicial authorities of Panama. And because to present this situation that is of concern, we are on behalf of our people here. We have received several death threats, harassment. We have been humiliated. And we have different people who are invading our lands and the state has not complied with its duty to protect us as environmental defenders. The state has not stopped these activities. We are without protection and they are not complying with the protection of human rights. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Wendy Panama. I'm from a territory that is delimited according to law 10 of 1997. Uh, because of all these situations that we have gone through as defenders and taking into consideration what we have explained, we would like to request the Honorable Commission the following. One, we want the Commission to request the Panamanian state to prepare a special report on the situation of environmental human rights in Panama. Second, if it's possible, we want that the Commission conducts an in loco visit to the Panaman Panamanian Republic to observe the situation of human rights, especially in indigenous areas and in the territories of indig indigenous peoples. Third, that the Commission prepares a merits report on the case 12,000 717 uh, indigenous communities against uh, the electric company. Four, that the commission admits P10 slash uh, 17 regarding one of the electric companies in our country because three administrations have been in office and no administration is interested in the precarious and inhuman conditions in which indigenous communities uh, face in this river area. The current administration is not interested in the situation of indigenous peoples that live in the river area and there are five communities that are being affected they have no water and the government says that water is a human right but ha we have no drinking water because the water is in the areas where we cannot enter and therefore we have no uh, water for human consumption so we need for this petition to be admitted by the commission thank you Um, taking into consideration that we have presented our requests and we have some of our colleagues who presented their testimonies, uh, we hope that the state can comply with national international legislation and standards. That's what we want after the state here, our um, testimony. Thank you, civil society has ended. So you have seven minutes and 55 seconds that you can use in the second part of your intervention or 
I would like to know if civil society has ended or yes, we have ended so far. So I told you, you have seven minutes and 55 seconds that you can use in your second intervention. Now I would like to give the floor to the representatives of the state for 20 minutes. El micrófono. You're muted. Muchas Thank you very much, Honorable Commissioners, Madam Executive Secretary, petitioners, members of the Alliance Movement and different civil society, civil society organizations. My name is Ariadna Perez. I am the head of the Human Rights Department of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I will be joined by the Honorable Jonathan Rick, the General Secretary of the Ministry of Public Safety, Mr. Morales, the Social Environmental Manager of ETESA Company, the Head of Legal Advisor of the Ministry for the Environment, and a legal advisor from the judiciary, Farah Ugrutia, from the permanent mission of Panama at the OAS. We would also like to mention that we have the ombuds uh, person that will be presenting a report. We are here to uh, treat the situation of the um, human rights uh, environmental defenders in um, Panama, we will really appreciate the information you have presented after the hearings held in 2015 and 2017 about the defense of the environment and the human rights of environmental defenders. The state will show that it continues to upkeep its work in the defense of human rights and the promotion of dialogue with environmental defenders. We repeat our sustained uh, commitment and we reject the statement that we are not complying with our duty to protect human rights, like the right to life, to property, to freedom of expression, political participation and access to justice. Panama agrees with the Inter-American Court on Human Rights about the right, the correct protection for, for the environment as a basic for uh, well-being of humankind and its rights, the right to health, to life, to a healthy environment, and all rights emanating on the, from the convention uh, 2617 on human rights. In the past few years, Panama has worked and adopted administrative and legislative measures to protect its citizens, ensuring their right to justice participa and participation, aiming at uh, guarding the protection of um, in the environmental resources, protecting our future generations. Now I will give the floor to Diana Bros. Hi, our target is to prove the commitment towards uh, human rights as inherent rights of uh, our citizens. The, the Ministry for the Environment aims at protecting the space and all the activities carried out and everyone using the environment needs to uh, present mechanisms of protection and assessment of their activities. And this and transparent mechanisms allow us to um, protect uh, citizens uh, in Panama and abroad. And this allows us to identify strategic opportunities and the risks that stem from uh, developments proposed by the state and by the private sector. There are specific rules for access uh, to information. Panama became a party on the regional, to the regional agreement on uh, access to justice in uh, Latin America and the Caribbean, the agreement of ECAZU, and ratified it 
in March 2020, Panama kept on advancing in uh, measures against climate, climate change. Panama acted nine years before the agreed time 30 by 30, and it became an indisputable leader in the region. And in February 2022, it passed a law recognizing the rights of nature and the obligations of the state related to those rights. Its first article recognizes nature as a subject of rights the and the state's obligations and also people's obligations to warranty the protection of those rights. And the uh, state has always tried to protect spaces for citizens' participation and public consultations. And we cannot deny that the uh, pandemic prevented us from holding more instances of dialogue. The state has also, in relation to the uh, dialogue space promoted by the Commission in 2017, managed to address several requests presented by environmental defenders um, for updated information, which we have added to our report. The acts of Panama show the state's obligation in all of its dimensions to promote uh, business and citizens' participation and responsibility when it comes to the environment. The state rejects the statement or the accusation that it imposed projects that may harm the environment. There are several uh, participatory mechanisms that um, allow for the participation of citizens in the decisions of the state. Now, with regards to some projects that uh, environmental defenders have said are concerns, we would like to say that uh, Pedro Gonzalez Island is an area of special development for tourism. And it has an environmental impact study since 2009 that was ratified afterwards. And the Ministry for the Environment has carried out six inspections, which led to a process that complies with some of its commitments and they have no relation to what the community is denouncing. The Ministry for the Environment created um, wildlife shelters and also carried out a process of consultation with the local communities. I'm sorry, there's a problem with the connection. Afterwards, other stakeholders ratified the measures and the studies uh, adjusting its activities to protect the wetlands. In its role as an environmental protector, the state investigated different private companies that had been affecting the environment with its developments since they had no due authorization. We have, the state has also uh, sued companies for unauthorized logging and the undue use of land. Other environmental studies were carried out for several uh, hydroelectrical uh, plants. And these projects, were carried out after the corresponding studies were carried out, as well as prior consultations in compliance with the rules for transparency that are foreseen by the law. The state always continued to supervise the conditions in which these projects are developed. Nevertheless, in the last control, 17 measures were identified 
where these projects were not complying with regulations. Now, with regards to the plant settled in the Palo Seco area, 17 technical inspections were carried out the last one in September 2020, after a report for the death of fish, the lack of compliance was investigated. Finally, in Bocas del Toro and Palo Seco, has started did not start its construction stage, so no inspections were carried out. Thank you. Now I will give the floor to Mr. Caballero. Thank you. My name is Anel Caballero. I am in charge of water affairs in the judiciary. The state would like to manifest that the situation in Panama has been subjected to several initiatives intended to improve the services. In the past few years, there was a rise in the budget allocated for justice in order to strengthen its independence and prevent the citizens' rights from being violated. It is especially important to uh, discuss the implementation of the judicial um, career because now it because there's now uh, work stability and transparency in the way officials are selected, and in order to um, prevent intimidation from taking place, there were several initiatives to monitor uh, criminal and civil law. A uh, bill was dra drafted to uh, make changes in the civil code. The implementation of the accusatory criminal system allows for uh, something that is more accessible to the parties, that allows for um, preventing criminalization and the uh, overuse of severe um, measures like uh, pretrial detentions. The judiciary also issued an agreement number 245 in 2011, which adopted the rules of Brasilia on access to justice for those vulnerable groups. And the idea is to protect their people when they are unable or when their uh, capacity to seek justice is being affected. Now, with regards to the uh, right to protest, it's part of our constitution. Consti protest is not a crime. What's a crime is violating the um, right to meeting. So the judiciary is protects these rights. In Article 203, a law states that judicial officials need to be unbiased and need to be fair to parties and attorneys. An example of this unbiasedness are crimes related to the environment, like the case of the pollution in La Villa, where a company was fined for $1 million. Finally, the access to justice administration must be comprehensive and it needs to be accessible for anyone seeking justice. Thank you. Madam President, finally, I would like to add three aspects. On, in 2020, the uh, higher public prosecution for the environment was created aiming at prosecuting crimes against the environment that need to be investigated. In 2021, in May, Panama undersigned an agreement, uh, sorry, several institutions uh, in the judiciary created a multidisciplinary team to strengthen the work of the different uh, state levels to prosecute and investigate in a timely manner these kinds of crimes. 
in order to move forward with the protection of the environment of environmental defenders, we are working on modifying some articles of the criminal code on uh, human rights defenders. And in particular, in case these persons are intimidated or attacked. And then Article 401B uh, defines sanctions for uh, public servants, which sanctions um, violence against uh, human rights and environmental defenders. Now, with regards to the role of the police, they must respect the individual freedoms of all citizens. In a law from 2015 prohibits uh, uh, authorities or, or police forces from using lead bullets or mu ammunition. I think there are two microphones. That's the problem. So you should, when says Ariadna, there are two microphones. You need to turn one off. Yes, that's it. Thank you. No, I don't think that's it. Maybe you should stick to the phone. I think we lost her. Yes. We will save those four minutes for the state's following intervention, if that's okay. Oh, no, they are back. Yes, they're back. I can go on, I can go on. With regards to, uh, we were saying that the state has incorporated to its report uh, all the actions it has carried out in compliance with the law on prior consultation and the normative of the World Bank. So far, the uh, Comarcales project has not started because we, uh, the state recognizes the existence of um, indigenous populations in the area. The state has shown no setbacks in its institutional development in general or in terms of its environmental um, responsibilities. Panama continues to uh, raise awareness about its obligations in the protection of the environment and it gives legal and material tools to its institutions to defend that as shown in the ratification of the Escazú Agreement and the passing of the Nature Law. The Ministry for the Environment and other institutions have strengthened their capabilities to check on the ground the citizens' denounced reports. For the state, the um, transparency and dialogue with environmental defenders is a proof of its respect to the work of activists, which ends up benefiting the citizens and their future generations. As we have stated, the, uh, the right to a healthy environment is recognized by our national legislation. This is not just a symbolic commitment. We have shown with actions our uh, commitment to protect the environment. And the Republic of Canada of Pan of, sorry, of Panama pledges to continue on working on, um, trans uh, on bringing transparency to uh, information with regards to the environment, to ask for public opinions in its for its decision making processes, and also to create instruments to protect environmental defenders to warranty uh, the independent investigation of violations of their rights and to uh, resume dialogue spaces with human rights defenders. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sara. We will now move on to the intervention of the ombudsperson. Uh, the state can go on.
Good morning. President, secretary, commissioners, NGOs. First of all, I would like to kindly greet those who are following here. Environment is a situation of concern, especially taking into consideration climate change. In our country, we have the competent authorities that should comply with the laws through different monitoring, especially if there are situations uh, and we need to guarantee this fundamental right. Um, this has to do with mining, with pollution, uh, indiscriminated deforestation. For this, sorry to interrupt you, sir. Maybe you get closer to the mic and speak loudly because we cannot hear you. Because there are a lot of noises, but we understand that, but we need uh, you to get closer to the mic to understand what you're saying. Good morning. President, secretaries, commissioners, NGOs, all those that are here today. For me, it's an honor to greet uh, all of you. The environment is an uh, important concern, especially because of climate change and the degradation of the environment. In our country, it's necessary that the competent authorities conduct environmental monitorings. The Ombudsperson Office, we are here to present our allegations. Sorry, sorry. Uh, you have a representative of the Ombudsperson Office, and now you have a, a different one. Sorry. Can you clarify the names of each person, please? My name is Krista Miranda from the Office of the Ombudsperson. Bolivar Jesus Rodriguez, that is Director of Environmental Rights of the Ombudsperson Office. Uh, that, and I have another person that is Mr. Lau, Raul Rodriguez, that is a lawyer from the office of the Ombudsperson. Uh, we have stopped the time, but I need that internally you agree who will be participating because there was already a person from the Ombudsperson office that was speaking. So who is going to conduct the intervention? Who is going to intervene? I'm here on behalf of the legal office of the Ombudsperson office. I will intervene now. So perfect. We are going to start again. You will have four minutes because uh, the other person will speak for one minute. And for future occasions, please organize yourselves uh, for the sake of the hearing. And for what we are discussing today, you have four minutes. Uh, the office of the Ombudsperson has four minutes. The office of the Ombudsperson um, is an institution that follows the principles of Paris. Um, the current administration decided to reactivate uh, ecologic or ecology related issues in order to guarantee the right to a healthy environment and taking into consideration the SDGs established in Article 18 of, according to Article 18 of our constitution. This shows that we are committed to international, international, and and regional agreements and to comply with our mandate to protect human rights of any type. As a result, we started a proceeding for complaints that is better structured uh, with a focus on the environment. This office has 14 offices across the country plus the central office. We have a specific office and in Choco, we have the first center of citizen service or customer service in order uh, to help that or to promote complaints. We are following law 10 from 1997. And we can mention that we have 44 complaints at the national level. They are led by our regional offices. We have 23 environmental complaints at the central office. We participate as mediators in order to guarantee the compliance with different standards. We have a three-party uh, agreement with different communities, and we have had nine sessions. We are going to be part of the Committee for the Regulation of the Fishing Law, 
we are participating in negotiations between different um, community organizations. Recently, we are going to request a dialogue roundtable between uh, fishing our uh, fishers or uh, and the government of Panama. We also participated in the UN table and the UN conference, the COP26, and we are planning different environmental projects with environment ministry in order to promote best practices against climate change. We are receiving criminal complaints. Uh, for example, now we have one from a public company that is affecting the right to a health environment. We are also participating in the different prior consultations regarding mining companies, copper companies in Panama. We are working together with other foundations in a harmonized way and in order to uh, promote gender equality and the defense of human rights. Our office, the commission uh, conducted a visit to Barrio Blanco and there are several comments to make. We see that there is a violation of the rights enshrined in Article 47 of the Panamanian Constitution because there are several NGOs who have built their buildings in private property. The, our office recommends the investigation of the situation in order to protect the rights of the vulnerable population. And we are in active uh, dialogue with the central government to protect human rights. What we want to establish today in our intervention that we want to keep our relationship with civil society organizations that defend the environment. We as a human rights uh, protection office we are here to investigate um, any violations of the organic law and its amendments. Amend amendments. Thank you. In order to organize ourselves now, I see that the uh, person from the ombudsperson office, I see that they are located in the same space of the Panamanian uh, office. Can you uh, say your name again, please? Can you let us know your name and your position, please? Because I couldn't hear your name. Please, you're on mute. Christian Miranda, National Director of Legal Advisory of the Office of the Ombudsperson. And then uh, the person that I spoke first is Raul Rodriguez from the Environmental Department of the Ombudsperson Office. Okay, I just wanted to, uh, for that to be clear, because there was a lot of confusion. Since you are in the same space of the state, I was getting confused. Thank you. Now, uh, the Inter-American Commission will start its intervention. And first, I would like to give the floor to Commissioner Roberta Clark, country reporter. Thank you very much, uh, President Mantia, and good morning to the representatives of the state of Panama, as well as to the petitioners, civil society organizations, human rights defenders, environmental human rights defenders, and my colleagues within the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. Um, I will thank you for this uh, dialogue, for the exchange of views, and I want to uh, acknowledge and note that the state of Panama has ratified the ECAZU agreement, which aims to guarantee the right of present and future generations to a healthy environment and to sustainable development. I want to acknowledge that the agreement, which was ratified I, I, well, last few years, contains provisions for the promotion and protection of defenders of human rights on environmental uh, matters. I also, uh, in my opening remarks, want to take note of the Supreme Court decision of 2021 that confirmed the state's obligations to secure indigenous collective rights to land and emphasize the critical role of indigenous peoples in protecting biodiversity, natural resources, and the, and, and the, and the climate. In that ruling, the court used very um, you know, trenchant language and spoke 
to the indigenous people's laws, customs, and practices that reflect both an attachment to the land and very importantly, the responsibility to conserve it for the use of future generations. And that's really what environmental protection is all about, preserving for the, its for use for future generations. I also take note of the state's assurances uh, on its adherence to obligations to protect the environment for the future generations as well, including that 2022 law to which we were referred this morning, which recognizes the right to nature. Very, very important and appreciated. Within the commission, there has been a repeated consideration of Article 12 of the Protocol of San Salvador, which is the right, which speaks to the right to a healthy environment. And I note the Special Rapporteur uh, Soledad is with us today, and I'm sure she'll speak more about that. So the state's obligations include consulting with affected communities before making developmental decisions that affect the use of land, and especially so when that use of land interferes with other uses and is damaging, potentially damaging to the environment. Um, so it's recognized that there may be competing interests at play between the states seeking to drive development projects and therefore employment and revenue, uh, the interests of private actors seeking to profit from the use of natural resources, and the interests of peoples, especially those historically marginalized, seeking to preserve their identity, seeking to preserve their livelihood and ecological balance. These are, these are tensions that exist, I think, in all societies. And so meaningful cons consultation and engagement of affected communities uh, is essential and timely intervention to prevent and respond to environmental degradation is also very important. I have a few questions for the representatives of the state because we have heard uh, the, the communities, the society communities here today speak about um, inadequate enforcement of criminal environmental law. They've spoken about harassment of environmental and intimidation of environmental human rights defenders. Um, and they've spoken also of inadequate consultation, as well as um, uh, an equal protection under the law. So my questions uh, are for the for the state, um, and I want to reference the 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 complaint that when civil when environmental rights defenders complain to the state about environmental degradation, that there is perhaps inadequate response. So I want to ask the state. Is there a register of complaints made around environmental degradation? And what, if any, is the obligation of the state to give feedback to people who complain about environmental degradation as to what actions they've taken in response to uh, complaints laid? I also would like to, um, I've, I've heard the state speak about the assurance of protection of human rights defenders, and I would like to find out if there's a comprehensive public policy for the protection of human rights defenders. Um, I'll stop here. Gracias, Commissionada. Commissioner Hernandez. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Hernandez, you have the floor now. Thank you, Madam President. I first would like to mention what Commissioner Clark mentioned uh, at the end. We are here uh, to discuss state measures to protect environmental defenders. We have heard very carefully all the international commitments and agreements adopted by the state of Panama in order to promote the right to a health environment and the measures that they are taking to uh, face or to fight climate change and also all the measures to protect the environment. This is something that we uh, praise because it shows the commitment of Panama to protecting the environment and to protecting their population, especially taking into consideration the challenges ahead regarding the environment. And it's important to emphasize the important role played by the environmental defenders. That's why this CASU agreement in its Article 9 establishes specific measures to protect the right to defend rights regarding the environment. And that's why I would like to know the steps that are being taken by the state to guarantee and to make sure that environmental defenders 
can exercise their work without suffering any threats to their life, to their integrity, but also that they have that they suffer no intimidation because of their work. Article 29 of the Escazú Agreement is crucial to enable or to promote the, the protection of the environment. I would like to, I am going to be very thankful if the state can share with us the public policies that they are implemented to prevent or to protect defenders. And apart from those public policies, I would like to know if there are mechanisms that are already implemented and that human rights defenders can resort to uh, if they suffer any threats. And if those mechanisms do not exist, I call upon the state to establish said mechanisms. There are best practices in the region, other national mechanisms that exist in other countries and that Panama could use as a model to build not only regulations for the protection of environmental defenders, but also to create the necessary institutions for those protections to be effective. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Bernal, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to thank civil society organizations for their interventions. I also would like to thank the delegates of the state for all the information that they have provided us with. And also I would like to thank the commissioners who speak before who spoke before me. I believe that in this case, there are several aspects that are connected, but that should be differentiated. First, has to do with the protection to lie of life and the integrity of environmental defenders. Um, the state has the obligation, the duty to protect these leaders, these environmental leaders and that it should establish mechanisms so that protection is effective. Also, we are well aware that if a person is threatened and if that person requires urgent protection, the Inter-American system offers the possibility of asking for a precautionary measure so that we guarantee the protection of life and integrity. Then we have a second aspect that has to do with the due respect for the rights of indigenous communities in these territories, where there is a lot of environmental uh, wealth, and also we have other rights that are also enshrined within the Inter-American system. It's important to recognize the rights of indigenous communities, but also uh, one of the most, most important rights is the right to consultation. And therefore the state should conduct all the actions possible to guarantee that right and to hear the voices of all the relevant parties. And those measures should be aimed at recognizing the rights enshrined in, within the Inter-American system. A consultation does not mean be agreeing, but the consultation should include the appropriate or the proper procedure so that the consultation can be called as such or can be considered as such. And then we have another aspect or point. Indigenous communities in Latin America have protected the environment for centuries and they have traditional expertise regarding the environment. Um, their expertise has proved very effective to mitigate the effects of climate change. So I therefore call up on the state to consider that traditional expertise, that traditional knowledge and to establish a dialogue so that a state protection measures uh, for the environment include that expertise from indigenous communities. And then there is another aspect that probably is the most controversial one. Panama has two coasts and therefore uh, is threatened by climate change. Um, 
we are all committed to protecting the environment and to taking all the necessary measures to fight climate change. The explanations given by the government create a lot of hope because it is clear that the state is committed to that fight. And that's the question that I have for the state. I would like to know if there is a framework plan uh, for energy transition, because many of the projects that you mentioned are energy projects because they are necessary for society and its development. But I would like to know if there is a framework plan to promote energy transition or transformation. And I would like to know if that plan includes the expertise of indigenous peoples and the rights to consultation and also other rights of indigenous indigenous communities. That would be my questions and thank you for this dialogue. Thank you, Commissioner. And I have other que some questions before giving the floor to the Executive Secretary, Tania Renault and the Special Rapporteur. This is the time. I appreciate all the information provided by the state and also these contributions my colleagues have mentioned the issue of protection but i would also like to talk about prevention facing the risk uh, that um, defenders are at i would like to talk about prevention so i would like to know uh, from miss Weni. Um, I listened to all of the civil society, but in particular to Ms. Wenny, what are the affectations of this situation on women defenders and on their roles they need to take on? Because it's not that they leave their gender roles at home, they're as the roles as, care, as um, caretakers. There's an additional load, of course, but there's an additional risk as well. So I would like to ask Ms. Wenny to tell us about the particular risks women suffer, and in particular children, in the lack of access to water, bad feeding, um, because everything that impacts children are a risk. That's a risk to future generations because that will overload health systems. They will have problems in their learning. So seeing these obligations of protection go hand in hand with the obligations of prevention. And to the state, you've mentioned a uh, gender approach. I would like to specifically ask, even though you have a transversal gender approach, what are the specific measures to protect women defenders? What is the specific uh, contribution there? And I will now give, we have two extra minutes. I will give the floor to Secretary Renault and then Rapporteur Soledad Garcia Munoz. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to greet the Honorable State of Panama. Thank you for being here. And in particular, thank you, civil society, um, the community that has brought its comments and experiences. I would like to ask the representatives of the state, because Panama in uh, March 2020, it presented um, the um, instrument mentioned by Commissioner Hernandez. I would like to know if the state has had any experience in um, the uh, drafting of uh, prior consultations as established in the Escazú agreement, and if it had made um, efforts to harmonize its legislation as this uh, agreement um, commands. Thank you, Rapporteur. Thank you very much, Madam President. I would like to greet everyone here, commissioners, Ilustre Estado de Panamá, como como ya lo lo ha expresado muy bien la Comisión. Realmente seguimos de cerca y apreciamos todos los avances que que desde Panamá se abanderan. All the progress made uh, by Panama, which is an example in the region for. Uh, the protection of the environment and the fight against climate change on, for example, with the measures, the, the legislative measures that have been mentioned and the creation of a prosecution uh, or a prosecutor for um, the rights 
linked to the environment. I think that this hearing gives us an opportunity to discuss the concerns of the civil society um, beyond these necessary and important measures, of course, which are so relevant even at a regional level. And based on those concerns presented by the civil society, I would like to ask both the state and the civil society how we can solve or address these concerns. How can the state of Panama uh, strength, uh, give strength uh, to these uh, particular measures? For example, you have talked about the situation of um, the lack of access to water. And I would like to have more information about that specific, uh, the specific situations you have mentioned here. And with regards to the state, what we're discussing today is not only about the public institutions, but also private company. And I know that the state of Panama has been <clears throat> working in, in terms of companies and human rights, and it has an institutional framework with regards to um, social responsibility in the private sector and in the public sector. So I would like to know how this can be used in order to address this situation. Of course, uh, Redesca is at your, at your disposal in order to uh, implement the standards about our report. And also, I would like to remind you all that a couple of days ago, the Commission and Redesca published a historic resolution on climate change, Resolution 3 2021, that addresses the main violations in the states when it comes to these issues. And one of the top topics addressed by this, um, by this report is the um, issue of the rights of uh, environmental defenders. So as I said, you can count on us for whatever assistance you need to effectively implement this in Panama, especially considering the work of the state uh, in these spheres. And finally, I would like to ask the state about its effective participation mechanisms for the civil society in all the measures that were presented today. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you, Rapporteur. Now I will give the floor to the civil society for 12 minutes. Thank you very much. Um, the state mentioned the Escazú Agreement, and Panama then has the obligation to ensure access to environmental information under this agreement to ensure also the public's participation uh, in the decision-making processes that affect the environment, as well as, um, but the state also has um, the right, sorry, the civil society has a right to denounce any um, obstacles in accessing the uh, wrongdoings of the state or the lack of protection of the state uh, on the environment. And also, the Escazú Agreement says that the state should include uh, local populations in consultation in order when making decisions about the environment, the state has the, uh, an obligation to ensure the environment and the right of every person to defend their environmental rights. So we ratified the um, denounce of uh, Wenny because she went to try to get justice but she, uh, and information, but she got none of that. Another of our colleagues also uh, made it, filed a report, but no information was given to him. What we are trying to do is uh, comply with our God-given mission to 
live in harmony with our forests, with our fauna, caring for our waters. It is of the other essence for the state to articulate good actions of the origin of the uh, native peoples to protect our mother earth. And this is affecting the indigenous populations and also the regional lands. Unfortunately, the Ministry for the Environment did not react strongly enough because these laws are not enough to stop the efforts of the violators. We don't just care the land for native peoples, but for the world, because no one can live without the oxygen that comes from the trees. No one can live without water. Thank you very much. Um, in response to what I was asked, native peoples, in this case, women, this, we, we suffer all this persecution. Why? We live in our own land. We didn't take anything from anyone. We live in our own land and we are imposed a hydroelectrical plant. And these projects, the state argues that they uh, carried out these uh, free um, these prior consultations, but as a member of the state and as a member of the indigenous peoples, throughout all this time, we've only seen that the economic power and the political power are always violating our rights as women members of indigenous peoples. I think there's a problem with the connection because the image seems to be frozen and there's no audio. I think we had another connectivity issue, unfortunately. I don't know if anyone could tell them to turn off their camera that maybe we've lost the connection altogether. Oh, there she is. They imposed this, pro this project. The, the state does not care about the situation. We are living as a people. So in all this time, they have violated our gender rights by imposing this project. And we have seen this throughout all the territories. That is why we demand a visit by the commission to the Republic of Panama. I would also like to say with regards to the economic power, I was threatened with kidnapping. I was threatened to be sent to jail. They managed to seize my property. So far, we have had no answer from the authorities. With regards to the other company I mentioned, JPWSA, there, have, there has been pollution in the waters. toxic waste in the area next to my property. I filed a report at the prosecutor's office. I don't know what happened there because I have received no information from the authorities in any of the institutions we've mentioned. No one has complied with the law and the 
state of Panama, I feel is at fault for this, which is in cahoots with the economic power because that's how they violate our rights, the rights of children, of women, and of all human beings. What happened to my daughter that she had these allergies, headaches, vomits, and we would have to go to the clinic in the middle of the night just so that they would see her. There was a, a time when she had to miss school for 22 days. Once she was vomiting so much that I that she became dehydrated and I she had to be hospitalized. These were very sad situations. We would like to thank these, this honorable commission for allowing us to take part in this hearing and to be, and, and for its being our warrantor, a warrantor of our human rights as uh, people of Panama, as indigenous people, because this should not just be a symbolic speech. The state should comply with uh, domestic and international legislation. So thank you very much for granting us this space. Thank you very much. Now I will give the floor to the state for 12 minutes. Thank you very much. The, my name is Para Urrutia and I would like to provide that general information you have requested. The state is thankful for these spaces. We are committed to the protection and the defense of human rights, of the human rights of our citizens. And this space, as we've already said, um, is a consequence of the hearings we held in 2015 and 2017. And I focus on this continuity because the first thing I would like to say is to thank the civil society and the commission because these spaces are the ones that help countries move forward in the topics that concern us. So in a very responsible manner, the state since 2015 has had the possibility to show its efforts in strengthening its institutions in terms of environmental rights. And that is a consequence of these hearings where concerns are expressed. But it is done also through all the instruments, the uh, decisions of the court, as the Redesca rapporteur, the releases, the, the press releases and the reports, the state is very much aware of all that. And of course, things have happened that made us take that beep. We um, learned from the um, hydroelectric plant constructions. And as you might recall that in that case, there was a serious situation in terms of public order. And that is how, that is why the state tried to strengthen these institutions. That is why we undersigned international instruments. Yes, it is true that what the um, civil society requests is for the state to um, translate those um, agreements, those international agreements into a reality. Because of course, we all have a right to a healthy environment and whatever do the state does is not only for the state, but for the entire population in the world. And as Commissioner Bernal said, Panama is committed to the fight against climate change because Panama 
uh, relies on its natural resources. We have the channel, we have two shores. So the state is responsible and needs to adhere to each of these initiatives. That is why it's spearheading as these important actions in terms of climate change and protecting the environment because that's our livelihood. We move forward because or thanks to our natural resources. So it would be unreasonable not to protect them. So first of all, that is the context I wanted to mention, the institutional strengthening, but also after the ratification of Escazú, the state has been working in adjusting its legislation. And that is part of what we said at the beginning when we talked about the modification of articles in the criminal code, because the reason we're doing that is because of the Escazú agreement and the um, Ombudsperson's Office and the Ministry for the Environment are adjusting its work because of that as well. Everything um, is done in order to implement the Escazú Agreement. Also, as one of the commissioners said, there we have an initiative to create a specific mechanism for the protection of the environment, but um, I remember from the past hearing we had in October 2017 when, or maybe was it 2015, I'm not sure, but I remember a commissioner told the state, it's not just that mechanism, it needs to be a comprehensive system. And that is what Panama is trying to do. If we don't have a mechanism, then we need to strengthen each of our institutions that is why we created the prosecution for the environment. That is why the judiciary is creating environmental courts, because we need to bring this to the justice system as well. And that is part of what the commission told us in one of those hearings. We need to bring justice to these vulnerable groups, persons who maybe are not sure about the correct uh, path so that's an, the obligation of the state. That is what we are doing institutionally. But um, the Ombudsperson's Office, of course, plays its role as well as an independent body. And that's what we are trying to do. Now, with regards to the um, energy transformation mentioned by Commissioner Bernal, yes, Panama led an initiative of energy transformation, actually on the fifth meeting, um, uh, energy transformation was held some time ago. It was held in Panama. Panama was a leader there. John Kerry was there as well. And Panama is spearheading this uh, endeavor, not only at a regional level, but at a world level. So we are working on this. Let me see my notes. Of course, the um, spaces for dialogue are very important. And the commission has shown that. We have tried to approach the civil society before this hearing because we wanted to know about their concerns so that we could bring all the information. We thought it might have to do with the um, electric power plants that will uh, go through uh, that Comarca territory. And that is a uh, proof of how we are using this mechanism of prior consultation. And this has to do with uh, what we have learned from previous situations. After those previous experiences we had, the state is being responsible and passing a law on prior consultation for indigenous people for that kind of situations. So based on those experiences, which were not great, Panama 
passed that law. And based on that law, a new when there's a new project that will have an impact on the um, environment, so we will use this law and the responsible guidelines of the World Bank to um, have a dialogue with the local communities. So the state, what I want to say is that the state has learned from situations that were not particularly positive for the indigenous communities, but we are trying to have a, improve our relationship to them. So any merits report that might come up about um, any previous cases or any recommendations by the commission will help us move forward in that agenda. Having said this, um, we appreciate what the state, what the civil society has mentioned and we take note of all those concerns presented by the civil society we um and we investigate that's what the environmental prosecution is doing they are sitting at this table as well they are investigating and if you if mr montero needs information he can approach us but we will also take into account those things where they say that they've had no answer because all the pertinent institutions are sitting at this table. So they are bringing back homework uh, about from based on all the information and the questions we have received so that we can provide responsible answers. Um, because these spaces raise awareness in the situations to keep uh, responsible work so I don't want to forget anything, but I would like to thank all your questions because that always uh, is food for thought. And yes, of course, the Matusagarati Lagoon and that whole reserve If you look at the process for um, this proceeding, we will send a report. Once the uh, reserve is formalized, you will see that all the stakeholders were part of this, the community, the authorities, the farmers, because of course they are affected. All these stakeholders were part of this. So that's what we learned how to protect a site with such important environmental diversity. And based on the participation of key stakeholders, we were able to make a decision that benefits us all. And in the case of the fourth line, we are talking about uh, the a combination of the work of the public and the private sector. So the state now understands that it shouldn't leave everything into the private hands because of course the indigenous uh, peoples uh, have all this ancestral knowledge about how to care for our land. So it's very important to listen to them. We want to work in these um, public and private associations, and a law was passed recently recognizing indigenous peoples and their ancestral knowledge on the care for the land. So yes, I know that we mentioned many, many laws, but we all know that we need that institutional strengthening in order to achieve what we want to achieve. And Panama is fully committed it's providing a strong framework for human rights defenders and those who live off the environment as in the indigenous peoples. And of course, we are always at your disposal because these case, these instances for these spaces for dialogue are very helpful in our work. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's almost the end of this hearing. I would like to thank 
the representatives of the state, the Inter-American Commission really appreciates um, your being here with so many representatives from different institutions because it allows us to, um, it allows you to listen to the civil society and it allows all of us to listen to you. And also thank you, civil society. You all represent so many people. And as you said, this is not just about one community. You are the guardians of life for the preservation of the world. So it's a huge responsibility that we really appreciate. We also take notes of the civil society's requests on the possibility of an in-local visit. This is something that needs to be discussed with the state because we need the state's permission. But of course, the um, Inter-American Commission is at your disposal for this. And reporter Soledad Garcia was just telling us about this latest resolution on climate change that was prepared by Redesca with the support and the resources of the commission. And it's an important resolution that can also be a roadmap for the work of the civil society and the state for the implementation of the resolution, the exchange of standards to share best practices and to listen with um, this uh, attention to the impact on the civil society, on their children. You were just uh, hearing about a girl who missed 22 days of school, a girl who suffered nausea, vomits. This girl is representing a situation of inequality who will grow up with this inequality. And we look at the, if we look at the big picture and the situation of young girls and women, and that is one of the things we need to pay attention to. So as usual, the commission is at your disposal for whatever you need in supporting this dialogue and in this resolution. And I am sure that a rapporteur who is always there ready to help we know that she is willing to help, to contribute, and to facilitate this dialogue that may be a bit difficult, but I think we have a shared element, the care for the environment and the care for life and the dignity of people. So having said this, I would like to thank you all for being here. I would like to thank my colleagues at the Inter-American Commission. I also wanna thank those behind the scenes the with their cameras off. Um, everyone, Shana Santos, well, everyone here. Thank you so much. We will continue to work and exchanging experiences. This is an ongoing dialogue. And having said this, I will close this hearing. Have a great day.